singing Fior di Ligi. She is Dorabella's sister. Um, she is in love with Guglielmo. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but uh, at some point in the opera, she started also to have some um, confusion and she's perhaps also having feeling for another man who is actually, she doesn't know it of course, but the lover of her sister, Ferrando. So, this. so this woman, Fiordilici, I am I try to make her actually very much the way I would also be in life. That means she is, I think, truly in love with Guglielmo at the beginning. She is a proud woman. She also thinks she has everything under control, that because she loves him, she, she knows what, uh, everything what's going to happen, that she, she, she thinks she has her life um, yeah, under control, but uh, she's also very sensitive and of course when he leaves, when he goes to war, that breaks something in her and um, when, this, when those new boys are coming and because um, Ferrando, so the one who is, um, that she doesn't recognize, he's a very sensitive man and she is touched but something in her, in his soul. So I don't, I don't want to make this woman as someone light, easy, just want to party, have fun, or someone who is too prude and is scared about everything. Because you have those two um, dangers in this character. And often what have been done until now is as either a too light woman, a, a woman who is who is not thinking about any consequences or a woman who is too um, harsh and too uh, like uh, take the Bible and say no, no way. And I don't think it's like that because I wouldn't respect this woman enough. And so that's what I mean when I say I want to do someone who is close to me. It's not that she takes the same decision as me, but with the same yeah, complexity. And I know in life when we take a choice, Sometimes it's the wrong one, sometimes we doubt, sometimes we think we make a choice freely, but actually is something that is um, forcing us. So all those um, unclear um, emotion, this confusion we can have in life, I try to, to have them also with, with her and not to make her black or white. She's a very complex one and I love to play her on stage because I feel uh, every time also I, I can define something else, I can have fun with another emotion, I can choose this one, I can do her more funny, I can do her more zen, I can do her more <laughs> different way and it's, it's a very interesting role. It's an emotional approach. I know I have listened to this music since I am a child and um, Die Zauberflöte is my favorite opera. So I am very touched by this music. And I didn't want to think about, oh, um, how should it be sung? It's how do I hear this music? Because I think we defend the music the most and the best when we just go from the heart like there is a direct connection, heart, mouth, sound. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes to put it too much in the head, heart, head, <laughs> mouth, sound, it can be not, it, yeah, it, we, we can lose something emotional. Of course, then there are some difficult pages, very technical one when it's not enough to just feel the music. You have to be very clear how you want to produce the sound. But that's some technical part. But then for the Mozart sound in general, I didn't think about it in a technical way. I think it was an yeah, emotional way. At the beginning, to be very honest, when I open the score, I have the feeling I will never be able to sing it. <laughs> and even when I say yes, actually I have accepted some roles from the, for the future. Yeah. And I'm thinking, this is impossible. I will not <laughs> be able. <laughs> So every time I open a new score, I feel naked. 
it's like I have to find the right clothes. Sometimes I pick the wrong one and I throw it away and I take some others. And it takes time to finally find myself in it. It's a long process and much of the, most of the time it starts well, then it goes down, down, down and I have the feeling I will never, never succeed. And then somehow it happens and I find something. But I can't say it's, um, it's a clear process. Most of the time it's unclear. There are also some, uh, some recording I hear and then suddenly I am inspired by someone or I see a movie and then this character in this movie inspires me or it can be also uh, speaking with a friend and then we speak about it. I, I don't know, there are a lot of elements that can help me to that can help me to approach the music and to find myself in it. Yeah, I don't know. I, I would say I first listen to it from different recording mm -hmm. and I make my taste about it. I will try to find, oh, I like what she did on this phrase or I like the way she sung this, this duo or this uh, trio, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And um, then when I have the music in my head, I will start to sing it with the piano and learn the notes. But that is really like uh, solfege. I am not trying to, to give so much in it. And I am more feeling, does this page hurt? Sometimes it can hurt when it's too difficult, when it's too high, for example. I have more problem with when it's always in the high passaggio, I, I get tired. So that are the, I'm trying to find the pages where I think this could be dangerous. Mm -hmm. So I also get um, clear where could it be a problem. And so those pages, or sometimes it's 10 pages in Fjordeligi is a lot because all the ensemble are so high. And then I start to work precisely on those different technical moments I have picked up. I, would, I will not start from the beginning until the end and do peu à peu. I, am, I think I, will, I am focusing like a scanner, like a scanner, like a body scanner. I do a scanner of the score. Of the score. I see all the difficult pages could, that could be. I take them out. I wrote them down on the paper. And then peu à peu, every day I work on those different technical stuff with my teacher per Skype sometimes alone and uh, sometimes with a pianist I have in Berlin and then I, yeah, I walk peu à peu in the, in the direction. But as I said, sometimes something that is easy one day technically can be difficult the other day. And so we, we don't, I, I don't think there is a process that can make everything easy and perfect in a way that the day before the premiere, for example, I was still struggling on some, some stuff. And on the premiere and on the, the second performances, I wasn't happy with everything. And so I start, I, I continue to work and it's, um, I think it's a, there is no end to the working technically and emotionally on a, on a, on a role. It's never perfect and actually it's good that it's never perfect because if I can say, oh, I sang Fior di Ligi perfectly, then I am done. What, what, what do I do the rest of my life? It's not, it's not fun actually. <laughs> no, it's the same. Salzburg, Mozart, Festspiel, also it's a lot of pressure. Even if it's not the hundred, I actually I didn't think about the fact that it's a uh, hundred year, <laughs> year um, Geburtstag. I, I I am only focusing about the fact that I want to present myself and Fiordi Ligi in the best way possible. Yeah. So that is my focusing. All around is it's very important when you are. I have the feeling for me it's very important that I'm I create a kind of bubble, mm -hmm. still being social and, and nice is not that not closing myself but really protecting myself for uh, all those electricity that can be around because of corona because of yeah Salzburg Festspiel Fior di Ligi Così Fan Tutti everything I know it's important but I try to not care so much about it no no it was 
stressful in the way that we were scared that it could stop mm -hmm. because we are so ha happy and lucky to do this production. It was yeah. an amazing process, also artistical, uh, artistical process to work with Christophe Loy, to work with all the other singers and with Joanna Malvitz. So it was, I was more scared that it could suddenly stop that we will not be able to do the premiere because of a corona case. That was more the scariness and not so much about the, 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 it, it, I could get ill or that um, we, are in, we are watched by the whole world because we are the only big festival going on this summer. So that, that was not my, my concern. My concern it was I, I am so lucky and I feel so grateful to do this work with this amazing team. Yeah, I think um, I didn't have to, to go to the music. The music was there. Okay. I was born in a musical family with already opera singers. My aunt in, um, in Denmark is an opera singer. My mother is. My, my cousin also is now an opera singer. So we have a lot of singing in our family. And also for Christmas, I am half Danish. So in Denmark for Christmas, we we dance and we sing around the tree and it's um, we have also my grandmother has classical music from eight o'clock from the morning until midnight we have the whole day long we have the whole day long we have classical music so I can't I don't remember when I start to listen to classical music and I don't remember when I came when I went for the first time in opera I, I was nearly born there but I remember that when I was four or five years old I loved my voice as a child. I sang and I found it, my voice so beautiful and I really just adore to sing. And then I, I, I just decided to sing, to go to in children chorus. I went on stage at the age of six for the first time. In the, I sang also like the common children chorus in, in the opera. I sang one of the three um, children in the magic flute. Oh, so I, I did all my first steps in children role on stage, <laughs> roles on stage. And, um, and then, I don't know, it's, it was pretty clear that the best way I could express myself and I could show who I was, it was with my voice. I would say when I was 17, when I stopped children chorus, I stopped, I stopped everything that was in a chorus because I sang in a chorus from so six years until 17. So it's very long and it changed the voice. It makes the voice, with, because when you sing in, in chorus, you have to have a very equal voice. You, doesn't, you don't have to go out too much of the group. You have to find a way of the vibrato not being too strong either. So it changed your vocal cords and also the, your technique. And so at the age of 17, my teacher told me, actually it was, it was a, a friend of the family and he told me, you should stop doing chorus because it could also um, make your life more difficult <laughs> if you want to be a singer. And so at 17, I started to take some true singing lesson as an adult. But it was a long process because I had so much reflex of my old children singing that to find the woman voice, that was, that was long. So I think I feel comfortable with my, with my voice uh, when I started the opera studio in Berlin. So mm -hmm. five years ago, I think I was, I was in the opera studio in Berlin. But until then, so between my 17 and my 24, that was a lot of, um, it was a long process of finding um, a more personal voice and, and go away from my children's voice. Mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't knew, but when I was a child, I listened a lot to the um, La Bohème with Pavarotti and Freni. <laughs> and so now I know it was Karayan, the conducting. <laughs> but at this time, I didn't knew, I didn't. 
I, I actually I didn't care about the conductor. It was only the singing. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I was completely um, omnibulated by voice. When I went to the opera, nothing else existed. The orchestra, I didn't care at all. The conductor, the staging, the story. I could go to an opera, I, I didn't even want to know the story. That was not, it was listening to the voices, yeah. hearing what sound does touched me, what sound does a, a magical effect in the room and why and I was, I was like a mini computer in my hand and I not, head and I noticed everything and then I went to my mother and told her, oh this singer did that, that, that good and he didn't do that, that, that good. I had like really a very clear judgment and why, that, that I don't know, but it was the voice. <laughs>